So okay, I'll continue on that. So yeah, the, the easy things to do now is to find the solution. And uh, so maybe just as an introduction, so the, there is uh, maybe two major difficulties when we want to work with the uh, beta cells for human uh, therapy. First of all, as you know, the beta cells are dispersed within the endocrine, endocrine pancreas, uh, the exocrine pancreas, the endoc exocrine gland. So it's very difficult to see the, uh, the beta cells uh, in vivo. So actually, it's not really feasible yet. So we have to develop ways of looking and trying to measure uh, beta cells within the, endoc the, um, the, the pancreatic gland. And uh, the other major problem that is um, ongoing with the, uh, the treatment with our human patient is that even though we know a lot about some function of uh, the beta cells, most of the knowledge has been gained from uh, studies of mouse or rat islets. So this means that there are two th major things that need to be done. Is first of all, gain some more knowledge about human beta cells and also to be able to measure the function and the mass and the number of beta cells within the pancreas of the, uh, a living individual. So to address that, I mean, there are different things that, uh, so that we need to, uh, to develop that are planned uh, within the, uh, the frame of the IMEDIA project. Uh, the first one is to develop novel tools uh, <coughs> which will be required for the, to study the development and function of human beta cells and to uh, tools also to measure, to have human beta cells to study the, the, the functional uh, modulation by potential therapeutic compounds. So this is also an important goal in which we need to have uh, models for human beta cells or beta cell, human beta cell lines that can be really tested uh, for, uh, to, to learn about uh, how the, the current drugs, but also maybe new drugs that can be uh, developed, can work, really act really on human beta cells. This, this knowledge is very scarce so far, and tools to um, image in vivo beta cells so that we can measure the, the function but also the mass and the number of beta cells and see how this uh, beta cell mass really evolve over time during the pathogenesis of diabetes and maybe also during treatment and if we can rescue and restore normal beta cell mass. Biomarkers. So the idea is to have uh, biomarkers that can be uh, found maybe in the plasma that can be used for the diagnosis and prognosis of beta cell and function and failure and for monitoring diabetes project, uh, pro uh, progression and treatment. So there will be some uh, specific uh, project and work package to develop uh, models that will probably be started first in, in animal models to identify biomarkers that can really predict the function and uh, possibility the, the, possibly the um, uh, improvement of the beta cell upon different uh, treatment. And the last point here, knowledge, is really something that is, uh, as we, we are this morning, no, knowledge and doing just basic research should not be funded by IMI. Uh, but I think this is, uh, when we talk about uh, human beta cells, uh, there's, as I said at the beginning, there's very little known because it's been extremely difficult to work with human beta cells and <clears throat> because we don't have really the tools to do that. And we know from the, the, the initial data that are available now, we know that there are differences between human and, and uh, mouse or rat uh, beta cells that are more commonly studied. So it's really extremely important to gain novel knowledge on the different uh, pathways and sites that control beta cell proliferation, differentiation, and apoptosis. And uh, <coughs> also the uh, role of nutrients. You know that the beta cells, uh, this different last point, you know, we know that beta cells, their major role is to sense the fluctuation in blood glucose concentration, but also in other nutrients, not only glucose, but also lipids and probably proteins. And so there are a number of specific metabolic pathways or signaling pathways that are activated or that are there to detect the variation in nutrient concentration. So this is also an important point that where we need to get more knowledge if we want to uh, really address the fundamental question of uh, related to the beta cell biology. 
So to address that, so we have a disintegrated approach. Uh, this is a little complicated, but I mean, in, in a way, it's also simple because we have different work packages uh, which are actually addressing uh, the different issues. And so you see that the first one is really establishing new model for human beta cells, so that can be uh, used for the different uh, purposes that I've mentioned before. Uh, so that's an important work package. Uh, novel pathways and sites, these are the pathways uh, that are going to be uh, studied by a systems biology approach, but which will also uh, deliver some biomarkers. So if you maybe just want to have the, the keys for these different names here, uh, in the different pack packages, work package, we are going to develop tools, find biomarkers, and develop some knowledge. And for instance, in this work package, the three will be addressed. Here it's mostly uh, tools and knowledge. And then we have some work package on nutrient regulated pathways I mentioned, and uh, also on the development of an imaging uh, technology. Now, of course, all these different um, work package will interact with each other. Uh, for instance, to develop some new imaging tools uh, to develop to, to image the endocrine pancreas in vivo, probably data that will be ga uh, gathered from the different work package will lead to the development of novel surface marker, for instance, for the beta cells that can be targeted for a uh, new uh, imaging ligand. But also one important uh, work package is work package five, which is uh, a data repository and analysis um, work package, uh, actually, which will be supported by the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics, where all the data, which could be generated by genomics, by uh, metabolomics, by imaging, uh, and the different uh, animal models, everything will be stored there, and uh, <coughs> that will be available to the different uh, member of the e-media network. And also there's a lot of several uh, bioinformaticians who are there and we will work also in collaboration with other bioinformaticians, for instance, from pharma companies to uh, analyze the data and, for instance, uh, try to develop uh, or analyze the possibility to identify a novel biomarkers. So what is the expected outcomes of this uh, study? So first one, the, this is uh, relevant human cell lines. This is what I said, human beta cell lines will be extremely important for all the studies that we need to do related to beta cells in diabetes, to, to have better model for the development and assessment of diabetes therapies. Second point is beta, beta islet cell precursor isolation and purification. And actually, one of the important points as mentioned before, the, the problem of the beta cell mass, which we think can be improved by stimulating regeneration of beta cells from precursor cells. And one aspect of one of the work package will be to identify uh, or use this beta cell precursor uh, for mouse or from human pancreas and to generate cells that can be then used to study the process of uh, precursor regeneration, transformation into, no, into mature beta cells. We have a systems biology approach of beta cell demise in type 2 diabetes, uh, which can really uh, be very important to provide uh, and to give. It's, it's, it's an unbiased approach, which we think will lead to a better understanding of beta cell pathogenesis or pathogenic mechanism. And this will deliver, we hope, biomarkers, biomarker candidates for, diagnosed, for diagnosis, prognosis, and assessment of therapeutic efficacy.